Good afternoon. My name is Adrienne Smith, and um, I'm going to talk to you about asset mapping. This is a presentation that's been prepared by myself and my colleague, Dr. Rebecca Zuli Lowe. We are social science researchers and evaluators, and we often partner with universities and community colleges to help them as they sort of strategize how they are going to go about broadening participation within their department or institution. And asset mapping, we find, is just been a really excellent tool for beginning conversations that are asset focused instead of um, the deficit mindset that we so often see. Really, they change the conversation from what's, what's lacking or what's missing about our institution and what's missing about the students that we're trying to serve. And instead, people are getting excited and engaged, and they're thinking more about what they have, and they're thinking more about um, how they can see opportunities, and they're seeing them, and they're being motivated, and it kind of creates a lot of self-sustaining moment momentum for those conversations. So, so what is asset mapping? Well, it's a process of documenting the people and resources that are available within a community that support or enhance a specific goal. So it's documenting those resources that exist within a community or ecosystem. There are lots of different uses for an asset map. In fact, as we do this work, we continue to find more uses for asset mapping, even though our original intention was to think about it as an evaluation tool and a tracking tool. But it can be uh, used as a resource map for students or, or faculty members who are working on broadening participation within their courses. It can be a referral resource whenever some barriers are encountered that so people can find and, and access those resources quickly. A recruiting tool to show people how the environment has created and has supports. Um, and also as a tool for strategic planning. And we've really seen some advances in that area. So what do I mean by our assets? Well, the first step that uh, we think about with asset mapping is to start thinking broadly. And to do that, we have categories that we help people just sort of start in their thinking about what assets exist in their institution and really in their environment, because industry partners, community partners are part of that too. Um, those categories of assets, these are the ones we've come up for, with for STEM, um, but we know as we engage more and more um, in talking about data science and environmental science, those categories are going to broaden, and so that'll just continue to, to provide the next group of people with those categories to start with as they're inventorying their assets. Now, in this particular diagram, I have at the center um, the focus being an underrepresented student in STEM, but you could think about this the same way about resources and assets for a STEM instructor. So the second step in asset mapping is to start mapping. And so we try to give people tips on how to go about doing this, again, to try to be thinking really broadly about their uh, institution and their community. So the first thing we do is say, please jot down the places in which you refer students or faculty or colleagues. Think about your known collaborations, your known partnerships, and then ask those people, who else is doing this kind of work? Who else is trying to, to build these kinds of supports? Uh, printing out a campus map and just identifying what other organizations have a similar mission. Uh, internet searches, looking at the university directories, all are different ways in which people can start to identify assets. The next step, and again, we sort of have pared this down <laughs> into um, some real um, concrete steps for just getting started. But you really want to think uh, about how those assets should be displayed on your asset map. And that should be tailored specifically to your audience and what will they need when they look at that asset map, whether it be a, a planning committee or a student, what information will they need and how will they access that information so that they can take advantage of the map and the resources that exist. Finally, we can use asset mapping for, for tracking. So a lot of people um, are focused on these efforts to build influence and to create these supportive environments, but they need to have ways in which to track how that um, progress is being made. And asset maps are a great way to do that. You can track the identification of assets, the relationship with those assets. 
um, the directionality between those assets. So um, asset mapping is a wonderful tool for being able to show your progress um, and for strategizing about what the next steps will be. So we have a little bit of um, information uh, on the table that just has just an overview of kind of asset mapping and some other tools that are um, that are be, will be helpful for um, getting conversations started to uh, broaden participation at uh, universities. Thank you.